Three Allegedly True Cabin in the Woods Horror Stories. These stories will be recounted in the same perspective they were shared. For example, first person perspective. Story one. Some years back, my family always liked to rent a cabin around a big lake with my grandparents every summer. We usually swam, used pontoons to fish at the lake, barbecued, and performed other fun activities. After coming here so often, this place became a good getaway from my town for me. When we arrived at the cabin for the first time, not gonna lie, things looked pretty sketchy. The neighbors had just come out of the pool as we got there, and they stared at us in a rather uncomfortable way for a while. Two nights after we arrived at the cabin, my brother and I had some trouble sleeping, so we decided to sneak out to a nearby pond and have a smoke, unknown to me. My brother was on painkillers and he passed out 20 minutes later. So, me being a young, reckless teen, I took my brother's share of the substance and snuck out farther to a little stump. Overlooking the lake, I sat by the water and smoke, looking at the moon and marveling at the pretty night sky. Soon after, I began to hear a strange sound coming from the opposite side of the pond. I looked in the direction of the sound and thought I could make out something moving. I have to admit, at that point, I was high and I couldn't make things out too well. After a few minutes looking in that direction, I saw a figure emerge and my heart sank. It was a tall man with a hood over his head. He wore all black and was about six foot seven. I also noticed he was holding a shovel in his hand. I froze and then noticed he was looking directly at me. Then he began to full sprint towards me. I freaked out and took off toward the cabins. I got to the driveway of our cabin and hid behind our parked car. I saw the man about 20 yards out looking around for me. When I saw he went behind an opposite cabin, I seized this opportunity to sneak back into my cabin and lock every single door. I slept as if nothing happened and the rest of the trip went by without any event. This experience made me wonder what the man was doing back there. I can't help but feel he was burying a body. I'm not entirely sure, but I definitely don't want to meet that creepy tall dark guy again. Story 2 My family and I went out to Tennessee for my dad and mom's honeymoon. We rented a cabin out in the woods, and my dad and I went out to the lake close to the cabin. My dad was getting the boat ready down at the docks when I saw a deer. I went wandering into the woods following the deer. I walked into a dark part of the woods when I felt as though someone was watching me. I turned around and saw the deer staring right at me, barely 10 feet away. Its eyes were red and its neck looked to be stitched to the head. I walked slowly around it, trying to get back to the clearing where my dad was. I and the deer never broke eye contact and this scared me since I didn't know what would happen if I looked away from it, even briefly. I tried to make myself feel better by talking to it. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. My voice was shaky, a clear indication that I was scared. The deer's expression changed. I swear it smiled, showing perfectly square human teeth. Then the deer spoke to me. But what if I hurt you? The hair on my neck stood up and my gut was telling me to get away from there. I heard a man's voice, and I turned to see my dad running towards me, shouting my name. I guess the deer ran off when it heard my dad, because when I turned back towards where it was standing, it was gone. My dad grabbed my hand and led me back to the boat. I didn't think about what happened. We had a great time until we got off the boat. As I tried to take off my vest, I looked up to see the same deer, standing on its hind legs with its jaw just dangling. It was so bloody the sight of it made me scream and it took off into the woods running on two legs. Startled, my dad turned around and asked what was wrong with me. I pointed in the direction of the man with the deer hide running deeper into the woods. When I got older, I looked up the area we stayed in trying to figure out what I saw. Turns out, we were on Native American land and I had probably seen a skinwalker. I was grateful I wasn't there any longer because who knows who or what else is lurking in that area. Story three. This happened some years back when I was 13 years old. 
I had a close friend named Aiden, who was a little older than me. Our houses were just next to each other. Our neighborhood was mostly filled with old people, so we had no one else to play with. We usually played random games at night, and this was before the internet was a thing. One of the games we played the most was hide and seek, but with the variation of the seeker using a flashlight, the big rule was that the person who was seeking had to keep the flashlight on at all times, and the person who was hiding was considered found when revealed by the torchlight. There was a huge stretch of woods close to our house, so we usually used that as the hiding area without setting a limit to how far the hider can go. This one time, it was my turn to be the hider, and I wanted to make it a challenge for Aiden, so I walked farther into the woods than I usually do. I soon began to regret this as it got very dark and I could barely see through the woods. What I had for light was the little the moon provided. I kept walking till I came across an abandoned cabin. I entered and walked up the stairs into a bedroom with a single window. I figured this would be the perfect spot to hide. I sat close to the window for a long time and nothing happened till I saw Aiden, but he wasn't holding a flashlight. He was cheating. He probably got tired of the flashlight revealing his position. I watched from the window as the silhouette got closer to the cabin. I could hear leaves crunching from his step as he continued forward, and he eventually got to the point where I couldn't see him from the window anymore. I could now hear his footsteps downstairs. Just then, I saw Aiden with the flashlight at a distance, and it hit me that whoever was downstairs wasn't Aiden. I quickly got down and hid under the bed. The footsteps came up the stairs and I heard the click of a gun when the footsteps got to the top of the staircase. A few seconds later, I saw large boots walk into the room, which could not be Aiden's. It stood there for what felt like forever before turning and leaving the room. I took this opportunity and jumped out of the window. I landed and full sprinted out of there. I could hear footsteps gaining on me from behind, but I didn't turn back. I soon got to Aiden, who pointed the flashlight at me, telling me he could see me and that he'd won. When he saw I kept running, he pointed the flashlight behind me and the expression on his face instantly changed. He turned and we both ran towards my house. We both reached it, went inside and locked the door behind us. We were both physically shaken and Aiden questioned me about the man who was chasing me. I told him the whole story and he didn't question any of it. We told our parents, trying to downplay it, but they called the cops and told them everything. Aiden and I never went into that stretch of woods again.